Andre J. <laughs> hey, I'm Star. And welcome to Exploring the Video Synthesis Ecosphere. So this is a show that we're going to start doing on a semi-regular basis, where we're just going to like take a little short 10 minutes or so to kind of like dig into some specific aspect of the controls of these instruments, because there's a lot going on with all of these, <laughs> and it's easy to have fun without knowing what's going on, but at a certain point you're going to be like, okay, I really want to know what the fuck's going on here. Right. So that's kind of what this is about, is just focusing on the details. Right, and today we're going to be diving into the geometry um, um, on these nano controllers. Um, we're going to talk about scaling and different combinations you can use to achieve different goals with uh, your nano control too. Word. So yeah, so let's get started here. So you can see we have something kind of dialed up already, but let's just hit the reset button so we can start from zero. <clears throat> so we're working with this video... Uh, this isn't really super relevant to this, but just in general, if you want to grab video to use and to like post stuff for working with, you can go on YouTube and use a search filter to like filter out um, just stuff that's Creative Commons. Mm. And I found this channel that has just like a shit ton of like this kind of like looping, like minimal video. And this one in particular looked really great to use for Wavepool because mm -hmm. it's got tons of uh, negative space. Nice. Um, but yeah, so that's where I got this video. Thanks to the person who uploaded this. I'll try to upload. I'll, I'll include a link in the yeah, description yeah. To, to where I got this from. Um, but yeah, so first thing we want to do, the first thing you always want to do in Wavepool is try to mix in some of the feedback. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go to the Luma key. Mm. And just Luma key in a little bit so we get some of that feedback coming in. Yeah, perfect. So the geometry controls, they start right here. We've got X, Y, Z, and rotation. And something you'll notice next to all of these controls is we have buttons. Each one of these buttons on the wave pool controls the scale of how far they go. So if you want to see what that means, try moving X and Y together, like at the same time. And we can see that mm. the, you can't go super far. You can do these tiny little displacements. Now hit the S button next to each one of those and start moving those around. And you can see Ooh. it's going a lot farther now. Mm -hmm. And if we go all the way down to R and move those around, then, Ooh. yeah, we're not doing feedback anymore. We're just like, <laughs> this is just going out of control. Like, right. Like it's, uh, it's going all over the place. Um, so the, the, the sort of handy mnemonic I use to remember that is small moves it, S moves it a small amount, M moves it a medium amount, R moves it a ridiculous amount. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, something to note too is anytime you hit one of those buttons off, it'll reset to the lowest one. Hmm. Okay. So it's at S. Yep. Or it's at default which is less than s it's, oh. it's so small it doesn't even have uh, uh, a mnemonic <laughs> it doesn't even have a letter cool. um, and then next to that is the z mm. so this channel right yep so try messing around with z a little bit oh so z lets you zoom in and zoom out of course there's not actually a third dimension inside of this thing it's all just playing around with like perception and like how we just sort of interpret movement because mm -hmm. we don't even see things in 3d we only see things in two dimensions we just use context clues in order to to, to provide a third dimension to what we're seeing so this is sort of working the same way where the context of just movement coming at you this sort of parallax is just mm -hmm. like oh i'm zooming in i'm going in i'm going into space here <laughs> <laughs> Nice. But this one's pretty fun to use. We'll try the different, try going all the way up to R. Mm. See what happens when you zoom in all the way? Ooh. So that gets kind of out of control. And you can see that oh. it like amplifies all the edges too. So it like distorts things all the heck up. Right. So what is, what's happening here with the, um, the square that's kind of being brought out by this feature? So... The actual wave pool is doing processing in like, uh, what do you call it? It's doing a resolution of 720 by 480. So mm -hmm. that's like this square right here, the square that you see on the output. And it 
it's not doing any other computation. It's not oversampling anything. Mm. So when you zoom in like that, and it like fills up the screen, and then you zoom back out. Right. See where those edges start? Right. That's right at the edge of the screen. So it can't really mm, pull I anything see that. Out. But if you hit this button right here, so that turns on toroidal universe. Hmm. Oh, wait. Did you hit that button or this button? Oh, I think I hit this button. Is it this one? <laughs> cycle? <laughs> yeah, hit the cycle button. And then, because we reset, we're going to have to uh, loom a key back in. Hmm. And now oh. zoom in and out. So you can see that it's going to do this kind of like wrapping around stuff. In yeah. Way. Let's turn up the brightness a little bit too. This one. So we'll really be able to see it a lot more. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Oh. So this is going to sort of, whatever's on the edge of the screen will just sort of get duplicated. This is called, I call this toroidal universe, because it's just whenever something goes off the screen this way, it's going to come back over on the other side of the screen over mm. there, like Pac-Man did in the old Atari games and all that shit. Oh, interesting. <clears throat> oh, wow. And then the final part of geometry is going to be rotations. So rotations right next to Z. Okay. Let's start rotating some stuff. Ooh. So this works really well when you're doing toroidal universe and you're zoomed way the, way the heck out. Mm -hmm. You can see what's going on is that like it's doing these fractal copies of everything that's happening in the middle. Mm -hmm. So this can do some pretty fun fractal biz. Right. And if we invert black and white... Uh, the cycle? Uh, underneath, right underneath cycle is going to be invert black and white. There we go, this button here. And let's turn up brightness a bit more. And then we'll start to get a lot of, like, cycling patterns. And mm. this is where we get into, like, fractal painting mode. Nice. And we can slow it down a little bit. If we slow down the delay time by a couple of frames... It'll be all the way to the right on the sliders. Mm. And then another fun thing we can do with this is we can turn on the mirror modes too. Hmm. Where so do you access that? The the little play button and the record button mm. where the transport controls are. Mm -hmm. Those will each do vertical and horizontal mirrors. So you can see now we can do some Rorschach tests. You can use wave pool with your friends, show them the mirrored modes, and then be like, oh. "How does this make you feel? <laughs> 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 what do you see in this? Does it remind you of a butterfly? Does it?" remind you of a flower um does it remind you of some trauma in your childhood like, <laughs> there's like all kinds of shit doesn't everything here. remind me of my trauma in my childhood am i right <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding <laughs> very interesting but yeah do you have any other questions about the geometry modes here i think that pretty much covers it i mean We've covered a lot when it comes to different X, Y, Z axes, um, the mirror mode. It's really, really, you can start to see how you can play with those combinations that we were talking about earlier just by pressing one extra button. Now we've unlocked a whole new world of what we can manipulate and play with. Like, look at that. <laughs> we can go back to our original thing but then we can also 
kind of create something new and mesh them. Whoa, that background was, <laughs> that was dope. That was gnarly for a second. And I'm like, how do we isolate? You know, like. Yeah, check out the little, the little like honeycomb pattern. And yeah, shit. it looks really nice, especially when it's the yellow and red moment. I really like that. Yeah, the color, color fractals. Mm -hmm. That's where it's at. <laughs> and the lightning is now shining through. I forgot we were even using lightning for a second. <laughs> I was like lost in the shapes and the kaleidoscope. Well, this is, there's something else you can do there it when is. you get in here and you <laughs> like crank up the brightness a whole bunch. Uh, where's that? Yeah, that one. And mm. then let's turn off, let's key everything out. Okay. Let's see if we can. Uh-oh. Yeah. There we are. So if we just key everything out and go over here and this, then we'll kind of, because we just like had like so much going on to begin with, mm -hmm. we're just basically playing with the feedback as though it's an oscillator now. So you can play around with stuff now and it's like doesn't even matter that there's an input. Like once you have like the feedback mm. seated, like the input is kind of like you can bring it back in, you can leave it out, like right. you can just play the feedback on its own. And that's that's what I was getting at. I was like, wow, I kind of for a second got lost in the shapes and patterns, and I forgot that our original thing was lightning <clears throat> striking in the background. So it's cool that you're able to kind of flow between the two when you want things to come in or go out, and I think that's a really dope feature. Yeah, a lot of people talk to me about, like, they're, they're really focused on, like, getting different kinds of video in here, and that's great, and, like, like one of the best things about Wavepool is that it works with, like, so many videos, mm -hmm. but, like, a big part of it, too, is that it kind of doesn't matter what you feed into it. Like, right. Wavepool is going to do this kind of crazy stuff on any video input, so even just, like, if all you have is, like, a crap-ass, like, USB camera that shoots at, like, four frames a second... Even having that plugged in and then going wild with the feedback is, like, going to give you a lot to do. So, right. like, don't stress so much about the video coming in because this is, like, an engine into itself. <laughs> <laughs> the video feedback coming in, the video coming in is just kind of like a little, like, push. Mm-hmm. And like, but what you can do with it, like once you just have it running is like, once you, once you got inertia, you can like play with this, like on its own with no input for like for hours. So. Nice. Nice. Okay. But yeah, I think that's probably about the end of this episode. What do you think? Yeah, I think this has been a good one. That's all, folks. <laughs> and that's how you, really and, nice, and really that's nice how you end out. it. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. I'll add the Looney Tunes. <laughs> <laughs> that right is there. what it was giving. It was definitely giving Looney Tunes. <laughs> okay, awesome. All right, thanks a lot. And Peace, y'all. Have a lot of fun. And uh, write in the comments what you'd like to see in like another one of these episodes. We'll mm -hmm. be talking about 
temporal vortex, artificial life, phosphorm, form, spectral mesh, and auto waves, mm -hmm. and maybe some new stuff if I come up with anything new in the next couple months. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, bye.